Psalm 78, 42 said, they remembered not his hand. The word hand there always in Hebrew means power. Somebody say hand. Amen. Even in Proverbs 18 and 21 said, death and lives in the power of the tongue. That word power there means the hand. I call it the third hand. Somebody say you got three hands. One of them's a six ounce piece of meat between your bottom and top lip. That's how you receive from God or you ball up your fist at God with what you say with your mouth. Amen. So the hand of the tongue or the power of the tongue. So when you see the word hand, especially in the Old Testament, you're talking about the power of God. Somebody would say they remembered not his hand. They remembered not his power. And this is talking about a past power. Not that God's power is just past. No, he's present. The power of the Lord was present to heal him. Luke 6, 17. But they forget by his power what he did for them. It says, nor the day. Somebody say, so they remembered not his power. Somebody say, and they didn't remember the day that his power, his hand, delivered them from the enemy. Psalms 107 verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom the Lord hath delivered out of the hand or out of the power of the enemy. Somebody shout, God's power delivered me from the power of Satan. And this is not only a moment, but he's talking about a day of deliverance. They forgot what God did for them. They remembered not his hand. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit through after 32 years, even at that funeral the other evening, I went to preaching back when I was 18 and what happened with that little Gideon Bible and I was so suicidal, got to preaching in that, hey man, the funeral about that. The, uh, the mayor was there and the whole police force was there. I don't know who all was there. I know the Holy Ghost was there and I didn't care who was there. I was on fire. I, I was, t and I began to reflect back and, they, and, and, and it seems like the older I get, the more I reflect back to when I started. And I said, Lord, why do I keep thinking back so much? He said, because this is how you keep moving forward without falling. A lot of people's forgot where they've come from. They forgot what he did. They forgot his power. Some ought to say recalling his power. Some ought to say remind and return. That's what God told me to do this morning. He said remind them and then tell somebody to return to it. Somebody say it ain't too late. Write down if you can read it right here. It says keeping the old flame fresh. Friend I want that old flame that began to burn in me at 18 I want to keep it fresh even though now I'm 50. Somebody shout, it ain't time to relax it back. And if you have, because you'll relax before you go away. Many get relaxed. Amen. Get into that place where they settle with God. Amen. Praise God. And they stop going after God. And after a while they start settling for a man-made fire. They start just settling for a little sermonette and a little song and a little feeling. Oh, for somebody to prophesy it to them and hand it to them with the laying on of a hand. Oh, glory to God, but they forgot when they first got saved. Amen. When they first got called, when they went after God and they came to the altar and didn't need an excuse. Didn't need nobody to acknowledge their gift in the room. They was in love with Jesus. The distance weren't too far. The cost was never too much. Now, all of a sudden, it's too far and the cost is too much. It weren't when you first got saved. It's amazing that the things people use to excuse themselves from going hard, following hard after God and however we live. If they'll remember, and some sadly, it weren't that long ago. I'm talking about just months. Amen. Brother Rob, it would have never been a thought to them. And if it was, immediately they refused it. Why? Because they had something then they ain't got now. They was hungry then. Yeah. It was new. They were new. But the news started wearing off. And that's why a lot of people claim, quote unquote, to be wearing out. Wearing down. Because they no longer live for him like he's new. He's just that old flame. Well, friend, the longer you serve him, yeah, you're going to get older. That's why I sang that song, still new to me. Because I began to pray this morning and said, Lord, I don't care if you let me live. 
the length of time you've let me serve you now. I've been serving you over 32. If you give me 32 more years, Lord, at the end of the next 32, I want to be closer then than I am now. I don't want to be wearing out and wearing down. Come on. People are doing that. They're falling away. They're falling out of love with him. He ain't first. He's not the highest priority of their life. And you can always discern a, a, a false convert. Not just a backslider, because I'm preaching about backsliders. A backslider in his heart's filled with his own ways, Proverbs 14 and 14. His ways now dictate his life. His ways, what he wants. His, you know, everything, it's always. But a false convert, they don't possess this. They, they do not possess it at all. It's nothing for them to put God over here in the corner to the side somewhere. They've always got an excuse. Amen. So there's similarities there. But some ought to say even the backslider. Because I can't make the false convert remember. They weren't never converted. Amen. But I'm here to remind those who are here or watching wherever from your here is. Hallelujah. From hither to thither. Here we go. I'm here to cause people recall. Remember. Forget about your titles. Forget about all the positions. Forget about all the stuff. Remember when it was just you and him. Remember what he did for you. Remember what he delivered you from. Because if you don't keep it a constant memory, come on somebody and recall to your mind, friend, you'll do what many do. They leave him. He no longer becomes first. Oh, they still claim they're with him, but he's not first no more. Somebody say they've departed. Hallelujah. And they've fallen. And he's trying to say, remember from where you fall. Remember the falling. That's why we call it recalling his power. Because that's what the psalmist was describing here. He was describing the Hebrew children after God had delivered them out of Egypt's bondage. He delivered them out of the power of Pharaoh's hand 450 years worth Somebody say they had been bound a long time. And in a moment he set them free. Matthew 8, 27, there was a man at Gadarene possessed with legions of devils, tens of thousands of them. One moment Jesus said, go. And he got delivered. Somebody said, don't matter how long somebody's been bound. One word from Jesus. If that person will respond, he can deliver them. But what's so sad is to watch people get set free so quick and then see how soon they forget. How soon they forget. There's not enough of Sister Sam Papers. There's not a, enough of Brother Bucket Mouse and Tornado Tongue. Amen. <laughs> there ain't enough of them. Razor blade lips. Amen. There ain't enough of them. Because the last time I checked, there weren't but one that hang on the cross. And it weren't none of them. I hear people all the time excusing themselves from following God because of somebody in the church. Well, look, Jesus has been hurt by his own in his houses, in his churches more than anybody has. But somebody shouted, he still keeps coming back because where two or three are gathered in his name, there would be in the midst of them. Matthew 18 and 20. It's all this church hurt stuff. Somebody shout that straight from hell. Ain't no such thing. Church hurt. Church hurt. Welcome to the planet earth. If you go to church very long, I don't care which one you go to, you're going to get hurt. Every time I preach, I hurt somebody. <laughs> Amos 6 says it's a sword going in. It cuts you. But if you'll obey it, when it comes out, it'll heal you. Some, you got to hurt some people to get them healed. Come on, anybody here Holy Ghost? Amen. But that's a different kind of hurt. But somebody say, there's no church you can go to where you ain't going to find some level of it. Hello? But when you go back to the cross hurt, 
It's amazing how you'll admit with me there's no such thing as church hurt. Oh, because when you see Christ hurting on that cross, I, he said, considering him that endured such contradictions of sinners, lest you also be weary and faint in your mind. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 3. Somebody say it was Jesus that died on the cross. It was Jesus that suffered for me. Surely I can suffer for him. Surely I can suffer through a sister tornado lip. Come on, somebody, and a brother bucket mouth dump truck load. Amen, lip. Praise God. I'm surely, surely I can make it through razor blade teeth. <laughs> Amen. Jesus went through it so I could be saved. Surely I can endure it because I am saved. Amen. Because that's what the saved do. The saved endure. Because they didn't endure it to the end, the same will be saved. Matthew 24, 13. Somebody say, the saved don't quit. Now you can hurt me, you can spit on you, do it, but you ain't making me turn away from following him. Hello? So all these people, they fail because they forgot. Somebody say they fail because they forgot. Psalms 106, 12. It says, when God spake his word, when they heard his words, it says they rejoice. They praised the word. Amen. They heard his word and they praised it. But then verse 13 says they soon forgot his works and waited not for his counsel. His counsel is his words. Ain't it amazing? They shouted over the word. They rejoiced over it when they heard it. Those are the promises. But just as soon as things got hard or things just got a little bit out of whack with them that like they didn't think should happen, they soon forget. That's what's mind-blowing to me. It ain't how soon God can turn somebody around. It's how soon people can forget. Now, y'all just got to overlook me. I know I'm, I'm a hard one to overlook. You can't even overlook me when you close your eyes. My mouth's too big. Hallelujah. But <laughs> I know there's some on social media think, oh, I'll delete him, I'll get away from him, but I keep showing up on your page. <laughs> can't stop the Holy Ghost. Even when YouTube terminates you, you can't stop the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But I was hearing people say the other day after a funeral, my God, where you preach at? Won't about to preach like that anymore. And I'm having, because I've, I don't take joy in it, but I have preached at. I won't preach but one funeral. If the Lord calls me from here before He comes, that'll be the only funeral I'll preach at. It's mine, I'm doing it now. But I've preached at a lot. I don't, I mean, I'm talking about a lot. And uh, if I had a penny for every time I had one person tell me after a funeral, Boy, where you preach? I don't hear you preach. Man, you, you, they don't bother to preach like that. Boy, I've watched people come from where I'd preach at funeral services and come in the house of God. Come here. Some of them last three weeks. Some of them last three days. That's three services. You know? They liked me when I preached, visited them, but when they had to sit every week. Hallelujah. And God started getting in their business. Because that's what God calls five-fold ministry for, not to celebrate you. A lot of people's looking for a minister to celebrate them. No, and it ain't to tolerate. This ain't about tolerating. It ain't even about celebrating. Come on, somebody. It's about creating. Praise God. It's about causing a maturity to come, a growing to come. Oh, hallelujah. In the hearer. Hey, man, God wants to send you somewhere where he can edify you. Yeah, I want to be edified. That's what he said in Ephesians 4.12. That's why he gives an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher in verses 11. Hey, man, no, but you got to back on up. He said for the perfecting. Some might say the maturity maturing of the saints. Oh yeah, for the edifying of the body of Christ, the word edify means to build the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. And for the work of the ministry. Only mature people go to work. A lot of people don't want to work. They just want to worship. They, they, just want, they, they don't want to get into service of the Lord. They're just looking for a service. It's about the Lord. So they don't want to grow up. And so they usually go out. But, but, but here's the thing. I heard that and I had to start having flashbacks. 
I said, oh, Lord, let me get out of my mind because I don't mean that's that person. I don't mean, but son, if I had a penny for every time I've ever, I, uh, that was a lot of pennies. I, you know, I ain't say dimes or nickels, quarters, dollars, no, no, just a penny. I mean, I've heard it said a bunch of times. Hallelujah. But how soon is what really blows my mind. How soon they forget. How soon they forget when they turn that it was through my lips God said something to them, changed their life. But how soon they forget. How God through my finger would point at that camera lens and say something and it happened. And God turned something 180 in their whole family and in their lives. And how soon they forget. And I'm just using myself as an example because I don't know nobody better than I know me. I'm stuck with me. I told me I ought to get beside myself, but I ain't figured out how to do that. <laughs> so I'll just stick with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but how soon? That's what's the mind-blowing thing about it. Amen. And somebody's thinking, unlike this service, they soon forget. Somebody's thinking, ain't nothing soon about this service. But there's a lot of suddenly going on. So hold on. And Psalm 78, verse 1 says, Give ear, O my people. Now, God ain't asking for your ear. Like, you know, give God your heart. No, he ain't talking about your muscle on your chest. He ain't talking about your little ear on your side of your head. Unless you're Malchus, he gave his ear. <laughs> Jesus put it back on for him after Peter cut it off. But give ear, O my people. Somebody say, God's talking to his people through his prophet. Give ear is an expression. It literally means listen up. God's talking. Somebody say it's time not just to hear God. It's time to listen. A lot of people hear him, but they don't listen. You know what that means, don't your parents? Children hear you, they don't mean they're listening. See the sheep? A lot of sheep not listening. Back. Back. That's why some of them go, bye. They hear, they ain't listening. When God says give ear, he ain't talking to the world. He's saying to his own people. That's awful when God has to say to his own children, listen to me. Mamas, daddies, you ever said that to your kids and said it with authoritative tone? Listen to me. We'd say it like this. You better listen to me. Somebody say this is a word of warning. When the prophet is saying give ear, God's saying I'm about had enough. I'm fitting to start spanking now. As many as I love, I'll chasten and rebuke them. I'll say, repent and get Zagalus for me again, Revelation 3.19. Some ought to say, daddy's a little irritated. You ain't getting it no other way, so daddy's about to get to correcting. He's about, <laughs> he's about to take that shepherd's staff and bump some little sheep in some booties. Little, sh <laughs> little sheep behinds is about to get, get a little nudge. Amen. Uh, he said to my law notice he didn't say to my promises everybody wants, to, everybody wants to hear God's promises but they don't want to listen to his law his laws is commandments these are things he said I command I ain't suggesting for you to do I command you to do it huh? incline your ears unto the words of my mouth incline, in other words listen for don't just listen to me but listen for me because this is how I speak a lot of people don't they ain't listening for God they don't think he speaks like this because they've been told by that lying preacher down there at Temple Igloo with Jack Frost, you know, and icicles everywhere. Told them God don't talk like that. Mm -hmm. He said, I will open my mouth in a parable and I will utter dark sayings of old. Somebody say, God says, I'm going to speak an old word. I'm going to remind you some old things. Everybody's looking for something new. God said, that ain't me. Oh, I'll turn you into a new creation. But it'll be an old way that does it. Which ye have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. So these are backsliders he's talking to. These are people who's no longer, God's no longer first in their life. He's talking to people that once knew, Brother Rob. And listen, 1 Corinthians 10 and 12, in revelation of these same Hebrew children, the Corinthian writer says, take heed lest you fall. Let him that thinks he stand take heed lest you fall. There ain't nobody under the sound of my voice, including me under the sound of my voice that is somehow, you know, without having opportunity 
to do the same thing these people do. Even 1 Corinthians 10 said this is all here for our examples. So we won't do what they did. Or if we have, hurry up and get back. Don't, don't stay away like they did. Amen. And he said, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord, his strength, some will say his power, and his wonderful works that he hath done. God is saying here, you better give ear to me, you that once knew this, and get back to put me first, get back to put me as top priority, because you're responsible for the kids I've gave to you, and they're either learning from you how to walk with God or how to fall away from God. You're teaching them about putting God first or you're teaching them how not to by what you do or what you don't do with this gospel. And here's what's sad. Some of them kids saw you before. They saw mom and daddy when mom and daddy was really after God and did not nothing get between them and God. Now all of a sudden... These gaps. And what are kids to do? They have to follow mom and daddy. Amen. Somebody say, you being watched. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, did you know that? Say it with your eyes. Well, say, you know that you're being watched. I ain't talking about the government. I'm talking about by God. And you being watched by some of the most observing eyes and ears that's ever been created. Hello, them little ones. They're not only looking at you, they're looking up to you. Amen? If they don't see you pray, what makes you think they will? If they don't see you faithful to God, what makes you think they're going to be faithful to God? Hallelujah. So this is a generational thing. All right? Let's go on down to verse 6. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born. Who should arise and declare them under their children? Somebody say that with me. Who should arise and declare them under thy children? There's a lot of people, a lot of parents that declare scriptures and declare this about God to their children, but they sleeping. They laying down, they laying out, they laying off when it comes to God. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody say, you ain't got no business trying to teach them nothing until you arise. Somebody say, you got to rise from your slumber, your apathy, your lethargy. You got to rise from that complacency. You got to rise from that backslidden state. Rise, amen, from that place where God's not first no more and get back to somewhere. Then God says declare. And that's how you declare. It ain't just words from your mouth. It's about the way you live. Somebody say, somebody's following you. Everybody get your eyes real big and look at there and say, do you know you being followed? <laughs> say, it's afraid of somebody's following you. Say, it's Ruth, Brother Ricky. Hey, somebody following y'all. I'm being followed. I ain't making fun of that because I have had people come to me in the altar and I'm Mormon, I'm being followed. You know, I, I'll try to take everything I hear serious. There's some things I see in the spirit that I know ain't, but amen. So I'm not making, I'm not making fun of that, but somebody's, I said somebody. Well, you are somebody. <laughs> somebody's following you, sister Melissa. I get, if I get that tongue out of the space between my two teeth right here, I could talk. Huh? I had to do this at that funeral the other day. I don't know why everybody thinks I'm so smart. They hand me all the list to read all these names. Yeah, they say, and I was told, you're a better reader. Right, they had a little lamp on the pulpit. I got up to speak, I pulled it like some church member did. <laughs> no life, no light. Bulbs is blowed. I said, oh, Lord, I should have brought my flashlight. Amen. It ain't got nothing to do with light there. My bold, my bold focus. <laughs> oh, I got speech impediment too now. <laughs> God uses mules though. Hold on. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with light and it's just the distance here. Uh, I might need some new, new context. Yeah, yeah, any longer arms. I might have to get you out here to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> the generation to come somebody say might know them 
How are they going to know them? From the parents that are putting them first that are rising. They show them by their lifestyle how they're living. That's how they get shown. All right. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. How are they going to know to put their hope, their trust in God? How are they going to keep from forgetting his work? Somebody say his power. How are they going to know to keep his commandments? Because they're watching somebody show them how to do it. Verses 8, it might not be as their father. Somebody say a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that set their heart aright, not their heart aright, whose spirit was not steadfast with God. So everybody say it's generational. Godliness or ungodliness. Living right or not living right. Truth or lies is inherited. It's passed on. This is a generational thing. It happens. Amen. A stubborn and rebellious generation whose heart is not set right, whose spirit is not steadfast with God. How do you know if somebody is spiritually stubborn, spiritually rebellious, whose heart is not right with God? Here's how you know. It's real easy. They're not steadfast. They're not consistent. You can't count on them. You, 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 they're unpredictable. In their faith. Their faith's not predictable. You don't know what they're going to do. You can't say their name and immediately know for sure what they're going to do when it comes time for God. When it comes God's time. You, you, you just don't know. Amen. You don't know if you can trust them. To be. Some ought to say that's the nature of a stubborn, rebellious generation whose heart is not right with God. The word right literally means steady or steadfast. So they're not steadfast. Some might say they're not consistent with God. They're not steady with God. Amen. He said they're like the children of Ephraim. Some might say being armed, carrying bows. Amen. There's the bow focals I was talking about a while ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. That's how you know they're a stubborn, rebellious generation. Their heart ain't right with God because as soon as a battle comes, they turn back. They're carrying bows. Some ought to say they're armed, but they're defective. I didn't say they, they, they arm, but they defect every time. Some, they got what it takes. God has given them the ability, but they forget. Somebody, they, they forget who they're living for. They forget and they become stubborn. They soon forget and they don't last. The battle takes them out real quick. It says, they kept not his covenant, the covenant of God. That means they didn't keep their agreement with God. What they promised God, what they said God told them to do. I got it on audio. It's on video. Every time somebody, God said, I had somebody the other day said, do, I, want, I need somebody delivered from devils, but we don't want them filmed. I said, well, in this altar, that camera don't turn off for nothing Jesus does. If he saves somebody, it gets seen on camera. If he heals somebody, it gets seen. And if fake devils come out, I'm not editing out the divine doings of Christ. I will not edit out the Holy Ghost. Come on. Why? Because it's his glory and he should get it. And there's somebody else when they see it, it'll give them faith to receive the same thing. Now, they didn't get offended with that. I hope they bring whoever eventually. They didn't get offended with it. Or at least they didn't act like they did. But I just told the God's honest truth. Amen. Here, let me just do that. Yeah, I need my pulpit that way. There I am. Somebody say they didn't keep the covenant. They didn't keep what they promised God. They said things with their mouth verbally. I'm not going to get into that. It'd take me a whole week to talk about that. I've heard that so much. And they refuse, somebody said the same as being rebellious, to walk in his laws. Oh, they were ready to receive his promises, but Brother Rob, they refused to walk the way God told them to walk. The law. Amen. And it says, and forgot his works and his wonders. Somebody said they forgot his power that he showed them. And then it just goes on and tells us everything that he did in the land of Egypt. Now look, 
I've never seen the Red Sea part and water stand up on either side. And it took me all night long to walk over on dry ground while God blew his nose. You may think that's a little irreverent, but it's not. It said literally in the book of Acts, he breathed out of his nostrils. You'd have sure been glad God was long-winded back then. Amen. <laughs> y'all feel like that every time y'all come to church, don't you? When I'm preaching. <laughs> Amen. All night long. Amen. And the water, I've never walked through, I've never seen that. I've never seen fire come down on the mountain. I've never heard God speak out of the cloud, thundering and lightning. I've never saw him rain down quail out of heaven unless I had a shotgun in my hand. <laughs> Amen. There's a lot of things that these people saw I ain't never saw. Neither have you. Last time I wanted bread, I had to go to the store and buy it. God would rain it down out of heaven and call it angel's food. Somebody say it was baked in heaven. Miracle after miracle. For 40 years they're closed, didn't wear out. I sweat in one of these things about a year's worth. This lining's done ripping. Huh? Shoes didn't wear out. I mean, one miracle after another. I've never hit a rock and water gushed out. And not only satisfied me, but a million other people. What a water fountain. In the desert of all places. I've never seen a cloud come over and lead me by day and then a fire, a tornado fire come down from heaven and light up the sky and lead me at night. Reason I'm saying all this, if this people can forget God quick and walk away from him, who in the world do we think we are? Miracles ain't never kept nobody. Signs and wonders ain't never kept nobody. So when I talk about recalling his power, I'm not talking about just what his power did for you. I'm talking about what his power did in you. What you got to remember is not miracles here and signs and wonders. I'm talking about you got to remember what he did in your soul. You got to remember what his power performed on the cross. So me and you, come on, somebody shout the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. But unto us that are saved, it is the power of God. That's the power of God I'm talking about. The cross and what it did in you, what it did in me. And when we forget that, we won't last. We fall away. A lot of people fall away. You, you think they just fell away from church. They fell away from the cross first. All the falling away from church ain't got nothing to do with 2020 and the pandemic. I've been doing this over 32 years. I've been doing it as long as I've been preaching. It's just escalating. They were doing that long before then. And the falling away crowd's always looking for the next newest excuse. Pandemic's over. They say... Don't you know it's only on or over according to what they say? But there'll be a new excuse. They're going to always be. You know, a lot of businesses for months thereafter, the COVID excuse, whoop, they're probably flag. Hey, Facebook. You know, just, just, just one, one, something. It's, all, it's always going to be something. Some might say because they're stubborn and they're rebellious. They will not walk in God's ways. They can't keep his covenant. They won't do what he's doing. They can't stay steady with God. Why? Because they have forgot that power. They have forgot what he did there. And that's why the psalmist, I'm not going to read all of it. He concludes. Listen, listen to what he said in verse 17. They sin yet more against him. It didn't matter what miracle he did. They sin more. Me and Lynn, we'd have discussions. I've seen people get miracles here just blow your mind. You got, I, sometime when I'd prophesy over people, I dreaded afterwards. Because I said, Lord, are they going to stay with you or leave? Because I promise you, 85% seem like they just take off. They leave God. Beats all you ever seen. I think I'm going to just, I think I'm changing it up the older I get. If I prophesy, then I'm going to turn around and command people responsible. Amen. To stay with God. Because it's just, it's just like I, I can't get over how soon people forget. And it says they tempted God in verses 18. 
And they asked meat in their lust. Numbers 11 and 4 says in their lust, they lusted and fell. They fell a lusting. Some ought to say they fell away from God because they was always lusting for something more from God. Never satisfied. Spake against God. And then they speak against God. How do they do that? They speak against Moses. How does people speak against God the same way they did back then? They speak against the ones preaching. They speak against the ones serving him. The ones living for him. That's how they're speaking against God. He said, and they believe not in verse 22, and they didn't trust in his salvation. Verse 26 said, he caused an east wind to blow in heaven, and by his power he brought in a south wind. And that's when he rained flesh, verse 27, which Numbers 11 to 31 talks about the quail I'll mention. Somebody say, by his power he did that. Wow, rained down quail out of heaven. Somebody say they forgot about all that. Said in verse 25, they ate angels' food. That's that bread I was talking about coming out of. All these miracles, it goes and talks about all these miracles. By verses 32, it says, for all this, somebody say, for all this, they still sin, sin still, and believe not for his wondrous work. Somebody say they forget his power. It's what they do. Even after he brought judgment on them, then they return early after God. Early just means first, putting God first again. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high their redeemer. And then verse 36, nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. That's them making promises again, but not living up to the covenant. And he led them, you know, or they lied to him with their tongues. Why? Because their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. Some might say they weren't steady with him. They're not right with him. Yeah, when you get right with God, you get steady. You get predictable. Uh, and on and on, how often they provoked him. That means they rebelled against him in the wilderness, grieved him in the desert, verse 40. They turned their back, tempted God, limited the Holy One of Israel, verse 41. Anytime you turn away from God, you start limiting God through unbelief. Because unbelief and hardness of heart go together. Verse 42, and there it is on the screen, and they remembered not his hand. Somebody say they remembered not his power when he delivered them from the enemy. People start going back to the sins, going back to the lifestyle, start going back to the way, start going back to the way they lived before they came to Christ. And they're slowly suffocating and they don't even realize it because he's not first no more. They forget. Some ought to say they forget his power. So this morning or th this day, whatever time it is, I'm recalling his power. I'm trying to remind somebody to return. And here's what most would say, return? I ain't left God. I can hear it in the spirit. I ain't went nowhere. No. Remember when you first got saved and see if you went somewhere. We're thinking about people that's just not here. Yeah, eventually that's what happens. Remember when you first got saved? Remember how precious 1 Peter 2, 7 said that to those that believe he's precious. To many, he's not precious no more. Precious means the worth, the prize you have for him, you esteemed him above any or anything. He was valued at the top of your priority list. A lot of people don't even realize they're backsliding in their heart. They're, they're, they're wandering from his wonders. I'm going to end with this. I don't wear a watch. And there ain't one working in here on purpose. Not even that one. I ain't going to look at it. That's a soundboard, by the way. That's not notes. That's, I can run sound from up here. Uh, many have forgotten. That's why they fall, they fail. And it's not a sudden fall. It's not like fall from the cliff straight down. It's not that kind of fall, it's a falling away. Not just a falling from, but a falling away. And, it, and it's a slow fade like the song talks about. Slowly they start allowing things that when they was first saved they wouldn't have dared allow. In some, it ain't been that long ago. 
how soon they forget. Lord, help us to recall your power. I pray every person, whether they get anything out of this or not, I pray those that do get, let them get this. Let us remember when we first met you. God, I'm reminded of Peter after he had miserably betrayed you publicly and you were about to restore him. Lord, in John 21 and 3, he said to the other disciples, I go a fishing. Peter didn't care if he caught a fish or not. Lord, he was trying to catch the first. He weren't trying to catch a fish. He was trying to catch the first time he heard you call his name. The first time he fell in love with you. The first time. And God, I pray right now somebody would catch that first again. It'd be like Peter. I'm going fishing. I'm fishing for where I first met him at. When I first heard him call my name, I want to get back to that place where he's first. Hallelujah. Where I value him above any or anything. Because many, Lord, don't even discern that that's the fall. Because you said, remember from which you're fallen in Revelation 2, 5. And Lord, in verse 4, you said it was because they left the first love. Lord, that is the falling away. Hallelujah. So Lord, help us to recall your power that day that when you delivered us through the power of your blood from the enemy that had our soul bound toward a devil's hell. God, bring us back to reflecting and returning and remembering in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring us back to that place in you. That first place, Lord. Oh, Lord, that even months ago we weren't allowing the things we're allowing right now between us and you. Some, Lord, are allowing stuff they weren't allowed weeks ago. Stuff they weren't allowed even a month or two months ago to get between them and you. And they're allowing it now. Lord, you've called me to recall to them, to their mind, your power, what you did. Turn it up, go ahead. More love, more power. Jesus, more love, more power, more of you in my life. Oh, more love, more power, more of you in my life. I don't want to forget more love, more power. worship you with all of my strength. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. Help us not to forget, Lord. Hallelujah. More love, more power. I will worship you with all of my heart. I will worship you with all of my mind. I will worship you with all of my strength. You are my Lord. I will worship you, Lord. You want all my heart. That's what worship is when you give him all your heart. I will worship you with all of my strength, my best, because you are my Lord, yeah. More of you and less of me. But I must decrease John 3.30 Don't forget Don't forget Don't forget Don't forget where he brought you from Don't forget what he did 
Don't forget your rock. Don't forget what you said. Don't forget what you told him you were going to do. Don't forget. Remember. 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 Recall. Don't you hear the recall? The recall is power. Remember that day. Remember that delivering hour. Remember what he did and live up to it. Yeah, come on and live up to it. Don't forget what he did. Yeah, more love, more power, more of you, Lord, in this dark hour. More, more, more. How can we have more if we can't remember what he's done before? I'm going to end with this song. Must love you, not this world. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, give me Jesus, we're not. things that are in the world 
For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is of the world and not of the Father. And all that's in this world and all its lusts shall pass away. But he that doeth, not just believeth, but he that doeth the will of God, him shall abide forever. 1 John 2, 15, 16, and 17. They'll abide forever means they'll have eternal life. Those who do the will of the Father. Lord, how can we do your perfect will if we love this world? In this world and what's going on in it, we put before you and your kingdom. Lord, help us, Jesus, to make you everything. Cause, Lord, you him today. Praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. No, praise him with everything that don't even fall. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Can't force praise or force feed either, so amen. I hope you get where we're going with that, but